I know the sun is up and I got things to do But I don't think I've got the energy to move And I go back to my dreams again But I shouldn't be sleeping when It's daylight now and I'm stuck in my bed Daylight now and I'm stuck in my head Cause I've been just not all on my own And I should make my way out of my home It's daylight now, gotta open my eyes Daylight now, can't be wasting my time I absolutely love being an early, early riser. And one of the things that makes it really easy is using a sunrise alarm clock. The one I use is the Hatch Restore, and it really has been a game changer in my morning routine, especially since I do live with my fiance and of course I don't want a blaring alarm clock to go off at 5 a.m. when he sleeps closer to like six or seven. So uh, it's a really, really helpful and probably one of the better investments I've made. I also always set out my gym clothes the night before so that way I can just roll out of bed and put that on. And no, I'm actually not a morning workout person, so you are not gonna see that in this video, but the reason that I do it is so that way on my lunch break, I can take a nice walk outside, or you know, even when the day winds down, I go directly to the gym, so I have no excuses to not go there. <laughs> Everything is already on my body, my gym bag is packed, and I do all of that the night before, so that way I can just be set up and ready to go. Then I put my ring on, my Apple Watch, and then I head downstairs. The first thing I do as soon as I'm downstairs is put on a playlist. I made this playlist called Chill Vibes, which as you can imagine is very chill vibes, but I just put it on a low volume so that way I can have some background music as I do my actual morning routine. And then if I have not filled up my water bottle yet, I make sure that this is the first thing I do. I just take this whole liter and down it. As you guys know from my previous video, I do drink one gallon of water a day, which is a lot, but as long as I'm knocking out this first liter, one out of four early in the morning, then it's pretty easy and I get to reward myself with coffee afterwards. The next thing that I do is actually just wipe down a couple of surfaces. I feel like tidying my workspace, which when you're working remote, of course, is in your home, but just wiping down my coffee table, you know, a couple of kitchen counters, and then of course my desk is so therapeutic to me. Whenever I have less clutter, I have such a clearer mind, and I don't know what it psychologically does for me or other people that do this, but it really does help me kind of quite literally have a clean slate for my day and it really sets the stage to be productive. After my surfaces are clean, I then proceed to light pretty much every single candle that is downstairs. <laughs> of course, 5 a.m. the sun has not risen quite yet, so it is quite dark. I don't turn on any fluorescent or overhead lights, but instead I create a very zen calming workspace that is lit by candlelight. It's just kind of a way to make my morning routine almost feel like a spa day. It's this mental hack that I use to treat myself, give myself something to look forward to early in the morning. And as you can imagine, it's incredibly cozy. So I just go through, light all of my candles, which I usually blow out the minute that the sun is up, but just early in the morning, it just creates a nice little ritual and routine. And as you can imagine, a very therapeutic atmosphere too. Then of course, gotta do just a little bit of skincare. I only wash my face immediately. I don't do anything else too, too crazy, but I just wash my face and then brush my teeth. 
Um, I end up doing a little bit more skincare in a couple of hours where I put on more moisturizer, my sunscreen, and I'm going to take you guys along with me and chit chat with you as I do that. But just starting off, we're just going to wash my face, nothing too crazy. And then of course, brush my teeth. And I also got a water pick. It is phenomenal. I hate flossing my teeth. I don't know if anyone else does too, but of course I know it's necessary and having this water pick, oh my goodness, it has been a game changer. I absolutely love it. It makes my mouth feel so clean and I love it. By this time, I do probably the least glamorous part of my morning routine, which is take my dog outside to use the bathroom. But you know what? It's got to be done. That's real life. And it's a good little moment to give my animals some attention. Pet the cat, pet the dog, make sure that they're fed and happy in the morning as well. And not only do I care for my animals early, but I also care for my plants if they need it. This of course is not something that I have to do every single day, but today they definitely looked a little thirsty. So I made sure to water my plants before I set up for my work day. desk is all set up the first thing that I do is kind of my own rendition of the five minute journal as you can see this is not the five minute journal but I use the exact same prompts just because I liked this journal better and I still wanted to implement the prompts that the five minute journal has in them and if you're not familiar with that basically the entire premise focuses on one thing which is positive thinking first thing in the morning it aims to help you shift your mentality build the habit of thinking about the good of course rather than the bad which is why you should start and then also end your day with it this is the morning section that you're going to see right here but it's really just meant to be a practical way to implement positive thinking, gratitude, manifestation into your day without it being like super daunting and it's entirely approachable. And I love it. That's why I kind of created my own makeshift version of it where I write down the prompts that are provided in this journal, but I did not purchase the journal itself. <laughs> But there are three prompts in the morning that you're meant to fill out. You write down what you're grateful for to get that gratitude in. You write down what would make today great. And then you give yourself a daily affirmation. And my days are almost always dictated by one thing, which is my to-do list. So this section of my journal almost always has a portion that says get ahead on X project or go to X workout class. And, you know, I often equate my happiness with what I perceive as my success in the day, which I definitely need to work on. But with that said, I try and be very honest with myself. And for me today, it was finishing my work to-do list and then going to the gym so that way I could just wind down at night and not worrying that I was super behind on different projects. And then finally, we have the daily affirmation and I will be completely candid with you guys. The first time I started doing this a few years ago, it did feel a little bit cheesy. It felt a little embarrassing to give myself a new affirmation every single day, but it really is a game changer and it gets so much easier, especially not only when you write it down, but whenever you think about it and remind yourself regularly throughout the day of something you truly believe about yourself. So I find this super helpful and hopefully this too serves as a little reminder that you don't have to purchase the five minute journal just to participate in the prompts. As you guys can see here, I just write everything down myself so you can, you can do this in any way and give yourself different prompts too and make it your own.
Next up is the good old iPad. This is just planning my day and I make sure to time block my day in so many different facets, but it begins with my actual agenda. I start with my intention, then I move on to filling out my workout of the day and then my self care, but making sure that I have a true outline and structure to my day, something that I can look at from a bird's eye view and say, okay, this is achievable. I can do this and nothing seems overwhelming. And when I'm not organized, it it feels a lot more daunting to actually complete the tasks that I have to do. So I swear by going through a daily and weekly planner. I mentioned this in my last video, but the one I'm writing on right now, I actually made because I couldn't find one that was my favorite online. If you want to download it, it's completely free. I put a link in my description box so that way you guys can check it out. It works with good notes and a couple of other note taking apps on the iPad, but I, I love it. After I filled out my intention, my workout, and self-care of the day, I then look at my top three priorities. What are just three things that I really need to get done and something that is manageable for me to complete today? And for me, it was organizing my YouTube content, scheduling some workouts, and then reassessing my budget. Those are the three tasks on this Tuesday that I really, really wanted to complete. And then it makes it quite easy to take those three things and then schedule them in to my actual daily time blocking. At this point, it's probably getting close to 5.30 or so. I still fill out the five o'clock hour because I'm gonna have about half an hour left after this. So this is where I'm gonna dedicate some time to read 10 pages. And then of course, obviously I'm planning my day. And then the six o'clock hour is always my content hour. This is one hour before work that I dedicate to content. So it could be something different every single day. On this day, I just wanted to organize my YouTube schedule and then I also also needed to create some new thumbnails. So those were the two very manageable tasks that I gave myself in this one hour. But sometimes it could be editing. Some days it is scripting something. Some days it's just doing research. So six to seven, I always make sure is my content hour. Then from there on my planner, I fill out the times where I'm going to like take a lunch break and then add in those top three priorities that I was discussing earlier. Already knocked one of those out with organizing the content. Then I wanted to make sure my self-care was plugged in, which is taking a walk outside on my lunch break. And then these brackets that I'm marking off are my quote unquote office hours. They're the times during the day I'm working my nine to five job. And then for that, I use a whole different time blocking system just with my Google calendar since it syncs with meetings and stuff like that. So that's what that's for. Then plugging in my workout too. I'm going to Barry's at 410. So that way I can head out right, right after work. And then looking at this, I wanted to go ahead and make sure that my daily tasks were added as well. Reading 10 pages is one of those things. Exercise is one of those things. And then drinking one gallon of water is one of those things as well. Then I do have a section for miscellaneous notes. If I have time, usually I'll add in like a to-do here. If I don't have time, this is something that is a little bit less important, something that I can punt to the next day, even the next week. But if I find myself to be extra productive, then I can make sure to plug in whatever is in my miscellaneous notes into my schedule as well. I then go through and highlight some of the daily tasks and top priorities in my agenda so that way I don't miss them. And I noticed that budgeting I left out of my time blocking and I decided to plug that into walking outside because thank goodness for iPhones, I can at least get a good chunk of it done whenever I'm taking my walk. At this point, I have finished that first liter of water and gotten that out of the way. So it's officially coffee time. And yes, I am a Dunkin' Donuts coffee fan. I love it. I love it. This is the French vanilla, but I also just love the original blend. And I use a Keurig, but I don't use the K-Cups. Obviously, I want to be as sustainable as possible. So instead, I get the ground coffee and then I have these little reusable K-Cups. 
and they work just as well. So it's kind of a win-win scenario, but this is my coffee time and it's definitely a very, very important part of my morning routine, even though I don't know if I necessarily need the caffeine. Again, it's just kind of a ritual that has become a part of my routine as time passes. As I wait for my coffee to stop brewing, I always grab my almond milk and some sugar. I just put a half a cup of almond milk in my coffee, one teaspoon of sugar, and then I also froth some of that up as well and add it to the top for a little bit of foam. You guys, I wish I liked black coffee. I really, really do, but I just, I can't. So I put a little bit of this almond milk in a separate glass and then I just dump the rest in the cup itself. But let me tell you guys, this, almond milk. It's the Trader Joe's almond beverage is what they call it in vanilla. It is by far the best plant-based milk that I have found to actually froth up and create that foam. It works. It works so nicely. So if you're looking for something that actually does froth up a little bit and create like a top foam for your coffee, highly suggest trying this one out. I love it. Uh, Trader Joe's is definitely my grocery store of choice. So very, very handy that it makes for great coffee as well. We are officially caffeinated and time to continue on with our to-do list. And as you guys know, that brings us to reading 10 pages a day. It is just such an easy and digestible way for me to actually read. I feel like anytime I'm an all or nothing person with reading where I'm going to read tons of chapters, entire books, I, I end up just not being successful. So really just creating a bite-sized, very tiny micro shifts into reading has helped me so much and has really helped me create a routine that's sustainable. And it's great. At this point, Kyle is usually up, taking a shower, getting ready for work himself, and I am a huge make your bed first thing in the morning person. Of course, can't make the bed when someone else is in it, so I wait until he's up, but then I immediately go upstairs to take care of that. It's just one of those things that, you know what, at the end of the day, if nothing else goes well, at least I've done one thing right, and that's make my bed. this point it's about 6 a.m and it is my content hour which i dedicate to a myriad of things whether it's editing scripting brainstorming creating thumbnails you name it but it's a great way to have an hour to pursuing content creation on youtube without sacrificing time from my nine to five job or quality time with kyle or my exercise routine so this is the hour i knock that out and then if i have time after i complete my skincare throw some makeup on so i'm going to take you guys along with me for that Okay, I wanted to bring you guys along for this last step, if you will, in uh, my everyday morning routine, which is just a little bit of skincare, brushing my hair out, and then like the tiniest amount of makeup, because especially, I don't know, look, look at this. This is the weirdest breakout I have ever had, and I'm convinced it was one of two things. Like my skin is usually like pretty well behaved, but on Thursday or Friday of this week, I just got the 
weirdest breakout and it didn't feel like acne it felt like almost a bug bite or something bacterial it's something felt different anyway it's like healed but it's still scabby and red as you can see no idea where it came from but i threw out my like beauty blender thing it was like some off-brand one from amazon but i threw that away threw like tons of makeup brushes away got new ones because i don't know if it is like a spider bite or if it was something like from expired makeup or I, I don't know i have no idea but um yeah it looks ridiculous so <laughs> we are gonna we're gonna cover that up today and i also i do this in the morning and at night not not always i would like to do it every every single day but i try anyway we're gonna do it this morning and i i'm so sorry if i'm mispronouncing it gua gua sha gua sha and I just use, it's truly this hyaluronic acid from Trader Joe's. It's hyaluronic acid moisture serum is what it's called. Cause my skin is like super, super dry. Um, but, but yeah, this is so weird anyway. And I guess while I do this too, and by the way, I, I pretty much only do my jawline. <laughs> I don't know if it's like placebo effect or, or if it actually works, but I do feel like it de-puffs my face quite a lot, especially early in the morning. But I just do my jawline because I'm lazy and can't do my whole face. <laughs> but I guess too, like with these early morning routines, I like I like watching everyone's because I always want to see their why. Like, why do they do it? You guys probably noticed I don't work out in the morning. <laughs> I used to, but I realized that I am much more effective in my workouts whenever I do it after work, like immediately after work work so that way I can kind of burn off all of the stress from the day. So I don't exercise in the morning um, anymore. Instead, I prefer my mornings to be just me time, like quality time for myself. So that's my why behind it, because I am so go, go, go all day, every day. <laughs> you know, I live with my fiance, so I want to make sure that at night I can wind down and spend time with him as opposed to like still working because I have a full time job and then I act and then I make content here on YouTube. So my schedule is pretty packed most of the time. And I've realized too, like you really do give so much more to others whenever you put yourself first. It's like whenever you're on an airplane and they tell you to, you know, put on your oxygen mask first before you help anyone else. I mean, the same very much applies to life. And because I am very busy, it's hard for me to have me time. Like it really, really is. I'm also putting on a tiny amount of sunscreen. This is new actually. I'm trying to be better about sunscreen because as I'm sure you can tell, I do have a little bit of sun damage. Yay aging but you know I've definitely found that my ability to like be present and help others is vastly expanded whenever I do put myself first and this is the time for me to do it I also thankfully am much more of a morning person than a night person like I really I don't like staying up late you can ask any of my friends I'm the person that dips out of a party at like 10 p.m. there's also a quotation and I, I can't remember where it's from I want to say it's a Brianna Weiss quotation but it's always stuck with me and it's you know if you want to live a life that other people don't don't. You have to be willing to do certain things that other people won't. And one of those things uh, is waking up super early, being productive, and making sure that you have that like stillness and quietness for yourself. So that's always stuck with me. I'm gonna put in these eye drops. I use these Roto eye drops, but I've heard really good things about, oh, what are they called? Lumify? Is it Lumify? I've heard really good things about Lumify as well. Um, so let me know if you guys use those. But they were sold out whenever I tried to get them for myself, so I have no idea which ones I would like better. But waking up early and just being able to kind of like set the day on your terms, at least for me, is a game changer for sure. And then there's also the power of compounding, which uh, is huge, 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 especially as someone that does pursue a lot of different extracurriculars, if you will. And I'm a very, you know, ambitious person too. I like using this morning time, of course, to like work on content, work on other goals that I have outside of just like my normal nine to five. Because if you use time in the morning to, you know, move towards your goals, even if it is just 15 minutes, like it doesn't have to be like the whole hour that I dedicate to content even if it's just 15 minutes, again, that compounds over time. 15 minutes a day is equivalent to 91 hours over the course of one year or what, 13 working days. So uh, this is not really working, but you know, whatever. Skin is skin. Some days it's gonna be good. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit like this. But yeah, that's just with 15 minutes a day. If you do that every single day of the whole year, then you're gonna have 13 whole working days dedicated to doing something else. So that's why like, imagine if you, 
use an entire hour. Anyway, like I said, I just, I love being an early person for the me time that it provides. You know, you guys saw me like lighting candles and I, I really treat it as if it's like a spa day or something like that. And it just really, really makes being productive like very cozy and a very exciting thing to look forward to, which then makes it easier to wake up that early in the first place because I genuinely enjoy it, you know? Okay, you know what? It could be worse. <laughs> it could be worse. But if you are like me and you struggle to make time for yourself, I would highly, highly suggest waking up early. It does not have to be 5 a.m. It doesn't even have to be 6 a.m. Early is definitely subjective to every single individual. And honestly, my morning routine is like super, super cozy. It's very therapeutic for me. Like I said, I don't go to the gym and sweat. I, I roll out of bed. But at the same time, it is highly productive. In my opinion, it really does set my day up for success. And it's like nice to have one-on-one -on -one time like with my animals, you know? I mean, Kyle sleeps a little bit later than me, of course. So just having that time for me with my animals to be productive and honestly like treat myself. I do see waking up early as a very, very highly productive form of self-care. And I do want to make a video on that actually as well at some point, but um, kind of how I've redefined what self-care is for me versus what Cosmopolitan probably says self-care is. And for everyone, it's different. But truly, the work that I do in the morning is... I. I I see it as invaluable and a lot of it is very self-care-y, making sure I organize my day so I'm not overwhelmed with work or anything, making sure that I hydrate <laughs> and then, you know, of course, reward myself with caffeine. Yeah, we're just doing concealer and powder today. I can't be bothered with anything else. Eh, we'll do some lip liner too. Why not? And it's so rewarding to like, no matter how the rest of the day goes, I know I've done one thing for myself. I've achieved something that is important to me. And even if the rest of the day goes to shit, I did something that that is important to me and that I, I think really, really nourishes my soul. And I'm not gonna lie, waking up at 5 a.m., it takes a lot of discipline. <laughs> it's not easy. It is like pretty hard work takes effort, takes uh, honestly practice too. And I hope that you don't watch these videos and just assume that waking up at 5 a.m. is going to like magically change your life overnight. That's that's not the case. But there are absolutely benefits. Again, it's all about the, those teeny tiny small habits that compound over time. Today is a hat day, everyone. And also just a little side note about these like morning routine videos. It's pretty funny. And until I was making this, I never really thought of this from an outsider's perspective. But today I woke up at 4.30 because then I had to set my camera up to show my alarm going off. So please, please remember that the internet is very much curated. And even though I am showing you quite truly my morning routine, it's awkward like filming it as I'm doing it. And it took, you know, significantly longer because I'm like, oh, I got to get this angle shot. Like making my coffee took 10 minutes when usually it takes two. So just your friendly reminder that the internet's not real. And yeah, no, I mean, there's no, there's no fault falsifying this routine that I have showed you guys, but at the same time, it was, you know, it, I made it look aesthetically pleasing. When, you know, I, most days it's not looking like that. Like part of the routine is actually picking up dog poop. So that's real life for you. <laughs> and now if he's out there, which usually he is about right now, I'm going to show you guys my favorite part of my mornings. Um, I have a friend that comes to visit me and usually he shows up like right before I start work and it's kind of like my favorite part of my morning. Um, yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's go see him. This is Stanley. He is a neighborhood squirrel that comes to visit me almost every single morning at the exact same time. I give him a peanut or two. And I did, I promise, I did ask my friend Amanda, who is a literal wildlife biologist, if what I was doing is okay. And she said, you know what, if he was in a forest, it would be a problem. But since this is Los Angeles and they are so desensitized to humans already and they quite literally eat trash, <laughs> she was like, spoil them, go for it. It's not hurting anyone. One. So I did make sure to get that approval from someone who knows what they're talking about before I do this. But look at how cute he is. He comes to visit me every single morning. And yeah, it makes me feel a little bit like a Disney princess. I can't lie. It's one of my favorite parts of the day. Okay, yeah, that was Stanley. And so you never know, you might wake up early and you might have a squirrel friend that comes to visit you. 
Now it is officially time for me to start work, so I need to turn this off. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my early morning routine. This is something I only do Monday through Friday. This is not something that I, I require myself to do on the weekends. If it happens, great. If not, that's fine too. Anyway, to wind down this video, um, I just wanted to say if you are interested in becoming a 5 a.m. riser like myself, you have to have a purpose to do it. You know, you have to have a reason why. Sometimes, at least I know, I get in the habit of watching certain videos and being like, oh wow, like <laughs> that's so inspiring, so cool. It looks so cozy and perfect. And then like when I actually try and put that practice into my life, it doesn't make sense because again, I maybe I, maybe I don't have a purpose to do it. Always take inspiration from people on the internet, but you know what? Just because someone does something does not mean you have to do it. You have to have the reason why. You have to have the purpose behind it because without a good reason to do anything, there's there's no chance that it's gonna be sustainable and you won't be able to do it consistently. You might be able to like wake up at 5 a.m for a day or two, but you know, you're gonna lose that momentum. So to be able to use waking up and being an early riser properly, you have to have that purpose behind it. And for me, it is my me time. It is where I really get to just like meditate, journal, plan my day, you know, just have those quiet hours. Oh, and also feed a squirrel. <laughs> With that said though, it is time for me to officially start my work day, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have a morning routine or a night routine or what tricks and motivators you use to actually be more productive. And for me, one of those tools is waking up early. So I enjoyed filming this for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see y'all next week. Bye. 8 a.m. I couldn't fall asleep again Been overthinking all the little things I've said I'm sleep deprived almost every night and I'm